the discussion, there is of course a context to it, which is the History Month. And uh, part of uh, the Black History Month is to actually start a dialogue, a dialogue which looks at the nature of racism in this society. And I will invite the speakers to try and keep their contributions short as possible so that there will be a space for dialogue because we will want as much intervention from the audience as well as possible. Um, Sam Alberti is um, a lecturer in the Center for Museology at this university. He is a research fellow <coughs> in Manchester Museum. He was also the chair of a content team that put together the myths of racism. So without much ado, I invite you to make your intervention. Thank you. <clears throat> Museums were racist. There's no denying that. They were founded in the 18th and 19th centuries as engines of difference. They were founded in the 18th and 19th centuries as engines of difference. They were designed to take things and put them in different boxes, literally and intellectually. They took flowers, they took art, they took animals, they took rocks, and they took people, and they put them in different boxes. That was what they were designed to do. So from the very start, they were designed to establish differences between human groups. The peak of museum collecting coincided with the peak of European colonialism between 1880 and 1930. And it's the legacies of these objects that we still deal with today. Scientific racism in the 19th and 20th centuries was based on the material culture found in European and North American collections, <coughs> be it artifacts or bones, or most commonly human skulls. So race was, in a way, defined in museums. Previous to the 19th century, it had been, the concept of race had been more about linguistics. But in the 19th century, it becomes more a morphological category. So you get uh, definitions of race based on, not only on skin color, but on hair texture, uh, on morph mor uh, morphology of skeletons, but especially on the shape of skulls. Some scientific racists, which were pretty much the entire European scientific establishment, claimed that different races were formed by different acts of creation. Some even claimed that different races were different species. So it's in this context, and it's these collections that we've inherited. I should add, of course, that museums were not and are not the only public institutions, educational, cultural, and civic, to have reflected these prejudices. But what makes museums particular is the inertia of the material culture that forms the core of the collections. Whereas other institutions can change rapidly with ideas, museums keep the same core of collections and they even keep their exhibitions for rather longer than we care to sometimes. So today we have the same collections formed in the height of colonialism and the height of scientific racism. We even have traces of some of the same displays. But it's important when we're thinking about whether museums today are racist to disentangle product and process. So the mechanics of museum work, the aims and intentions of the curators who work within these walls are avowedly not racist. And not only that, Many seek actively to combat racism, whether in the post-colonial turn in anthropological museums from the 1990s onwards, or more recently, when using museums as agents of social inclusion to try to enable and give positive identities to previously excluded groups within society. But there are challenges even here. The museum sector is not a diverse workforce yet. And although there are schemes that are seeking to promote diverse, uh, diversity within the museum workforce, they're small and they tend not to promote economic diversity. So the problem is that if persons of non-European heritage don't see themselves reflected in either the product or the process of museum work, 
then there's considerable potential for alienation, if not outright discrimination. So the question that faces the 21st century curator is what to do with these collections and their echoes of empire, and what to do with the material legacies of prejudice. Thank you.